So quick disclaimer, this video is supposed to come out late June or early to mid July. So if there's any outdated information in this video, just know that I went too far into production to really change it in the script. Also, Ghost of Tsushima didn't come out yet. And with all that said, let's begin. Hey there, Sony. It's been a while. Two years to be exact. How you doing, buddy? I see you're releasing a new console this year. You thought you were slick. You thought you were clever in choosing to skip E3 last year. Let me assure you, the bell has tolled. You see, because of the pandemic, there is no E3 2020. Really, I have no obligation to make this, but considering all the stuff you've been getting away with recently, I consider it my sworn solemn duty. Not to cover all the pre-recorded conferences publishers have been dropping this summer, just yours. This video was made just for you, Sony. We have a delicious roast preheated at a nice and toasty 400 degrees. Now get in the oven. This video has been a long time coming. Not a video about the PS5 necessarily, but more a video dedicated to punting the progerian child of media corporations down a spiral staircase. Sony, as a business that makes entertainment, is a goddamn mess. From the gross mishandling of one of the most popular superheroes of all time, to all the new censorship guidelines they're giving to Japanese devs. Yeah, how the hell did you think that was gonna turn out, kiddo? Oh! And let's not forget the thousands of false DMCA takedowns you've been throwing around at people for making shit posts. When may consumers want to buy your 20 plus hour misery porno, guys? And say, Neil, how come your main Jewish character has greasy hair and a crooked nose? Why are there crosses in a synagogue? Is there something you're trying to tell us? Come on. You can be honest with us here. And back to the subject of censorship, what's this little double standard we have here? Let me get this straight. You do in fact allow sexual content, but it has to be coming from a western progressive vanity project first, and it has to look like the least sexiest thing possible. Got it. Thanks, Veal Cuckman! I hope it was worth it to force your animators to render you playing with your dingling in a mocap suit! But enough of the pleasantries. Before we actually begin, though, I'm gonna play a little game as we run through everything. I'll start with the following statement. The PS5 has no games. Then, we're going to point out how many of these titles are not console exclusive, aren't really games, or are titles that would probably be seen cluttering a bargain bin within four to six months. See, for those who are uninitiated, a lot of new AAA titles, Sony's console exclusives especially, are more interested in delivering a cinematic experience rather than placing focus on the freedom of gameplay. Now, the PS4 had a few exceptions to this. God of War, Spider-Man, and Bloodborne did a lot of fun stuff with combat and exploration. Persona 5 is a massive game with a base runtime of about 130 hours. These games had heavy focus on narrative, yes, but they don't sacrifice the core element that makes a game a game. Some exclusives I didn't mention might not even be exclusives for much longer, as some have been ported or are in the process of being ported over to PC. And after that happens, well, that just leaves you with a few Blu-rays that pause sometimes to give you button prompts. Press square to watch Nolan North get his ass kicked! Alright, and with all that out of the way, let's do this. Just before the actual presentation itself commences, we're off to a wonderful start. The audio in the background music is... popping. Now, when my audio pops, I try my darndest to remedy the issue. As bad as I am when it comes to sound mixing, I'll at least make an effort. But when it happens to a multi-billion dollar company that's supposed to be paying people to fix this shit, and they neglect to do so, it's pretty fucking hilarious, not gonna lie. Way to give us the true seal of quality, Sony. Hold on. Stop. That's not supposed to be there. You douches didn't care enough to port the PS3 Twisted Metal to PS4. Why are you pretending? Now that the show has finally begun, what are you guys opening with? Oh, sweet Jesus. You are already doing everything wrong and we're only at the first trailer. Why would you preface your big reveal conference with a game that you can play on the PS3? Aren't we tired of GTA 5 by now? We're almost at the point where it's basically Rockstar Skyrim. No real significant campaign expansions, but we keep hyping it up with more trailers seven years later as if it still matters! Oh cool, we get one million dollars of in-game currency each month leading up to the next-gen debut. Yeah, I don't care if it's not gonna help me attain a refund on my PlayStation Plus subscription. Now this is what you guys should have opened with, a sequel to an amazing title that everyone's been dying to hear about. I for one am pretty hyped about this follow-up. I guess we can count this as the PS5's first game. I'll actually consider buying the console for this. Wait, it's just a tiny story expansion? So it'll just be an 8-hour campaign priced at $40 like Uncharted The Lost Legacy. 
Forget all the good shit I just said. I'm not counting that as a full game that can sell a console. <laughs> Insomniac, go sit in the corner and think about what you've done for maybe like five minutes because they probably placed you on crunch to pump this out. How you feel about this entirely depends on how much you like driving games. I personally don't care too much for these, but I'll be fair and call it a game. Not as something that will make most people want to fork over hundreds of dollars, but if it's your cup of tea, more power to you. Ah, a new Ratchet and Clank game. Considering the last few you worked on, this will end up being a four hour tech demo and or a soulless cringe fest bloated with awful reddit tier humor. And that's coming from someone that actually liked Tools of the Destruction, as watered down and lazily retconned as it was. So Marcus, what should we show for the first trailer? Hmm... I got it! Let's start with a barely interactive drawn out on the rail segment, a few seconds of shooting, and then whiplash into another pre-rendered cutscene, topped off with some nice furry bait that retcons more lore. That's... Perfect! Edit that in Premiere, finalize it, we're golden! Basically, the gimmick for this game is dimensional rifts, which, I gotta say, are utilized in the worst ways possible. It gives the developers an excuse to cut corners by using lazy stage transitions with boring falling sections. You can also use it to skip over large gaps. Woohoo. You know what other game did this shit with falling sections that are much better implemented? Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions. That was a good game. It came out almost a decade ago, by the way, just in case you wanted to feel old. Anyways, back to Ratchet and Clank. I wonder who's writing it. I mean, it can't be as bad as the 2016 reboot. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no! Hey, Insomniac, you can stop standing in the corner now. Because now you're getting the paddle. Come here, you little shit. Here's a new Square Enix IP that looks incredibly bland. But it's a game, I guess. That's another exclusive then. Wait, never mind, it gets a PC port. <laughs> Dystopian future game where you play as a stray cat with missing mouth textures in a world of sentient robots. Pass. Not a console exclusive. <laughs> also, what do these machines need clothes and blankets for? <sighs> an Ultra HD Blu-ray, Ultra High Speed SSD, even though it's probably just a normal SSD. Oh my god, fucking ray tracing! Haptic feedback! We're just making shit up as we go! Mm, farting controller! Adaptive triggers is totally a new feature we didn't have last generation! Holy shit, it has a USB port! Oh god, I'm gonna cop! We had a motion sensor since the PS3, but fuck you, you'll buy our shit anyway! Integrated speaker is revolutionary and has never been done before! And we gave it a headset jack! Beat that, Xbox! We just invented 3D audio, what's that? It's been around for years? <laughs> no it hasn't, you stupid bigot! With this new technology, mindless she- uh, I mean gamers, will be able to consume, uh, experience more of our pretentious panda, I mean rich storytelling, through thinly veiled quick time of, uh, I mean walking sim, uh, innovative gameplay. Wow, can't wait to see this riveting movie when it comes out. Yeah, there's shooting segments, but they just remind me of a boring version of Lost Planet 2. Oh, and you're doing a time loop thing? Cool. You give me a milk toast product and you think slapping that in will automatically make me interested? That's your title. Returnal. That's retarded. Try harder. You're still making Sumo Digital milk the little big planet IP? Why? They suck at it. And not only that, but you're using it to rip off Tearaway, another media molecule game. Please stop, this just hurts to watch. I see you guys got a new car combat game. Some interesting ideas, but the hideous aesthetic is an instant turnoff. <sighs> I miss Twisted Metal. Oh, Sony. Four exclusives in a row? Huh. Guess you really do have some game. Ha! Psych! Also coming to PC. <clears throat> Life is strange with poorly animated non-binary dinosaurs. Now, some of you might be wondering, why is this game garnering so much hate? Funny thing about the head of the project, Kate Gray, she previously wrote a lot of creepy porn articles on Kotaku including one about an adult Harry Potter game, featuring underage characters. Yeah. Also, did I mention the art in this is absolutely abysmal? The main character looks like an emo dolphin with wings. If you want a good story-driven furry game, just play Night in the Woods or Dust in Elysian Tale. Also not an exclusive. <clears throat> Pointing that out for maybe that one person in the audience that wants to shill over an ego filating dating sim. I understand that a lot of people are excited for the new Oddworld, and I'm relieved to say it is also coming to PC and PS4. <clears throat> Although a lot of the PC ports are on the Epic Game Store, many eventually release on Steam, so I do have hope. 
cautiously on the fence about Ghostwire Tokyo. It could really swing out of the way, and I'm gonna wait to hear feedback from other players. It certainly has potential to be great, and it could be if the cards are played just right. Oh, and Buzz. <clears throat> this is probably the most banal one I've seen thus far. And the dull gray shaded colors aren't doing this thing any favors. <clears throat> oh. Gearbox. Eww! And they're making a shitty looking hack and slash. Pro tip, overlaying a trailer with awful hypegraph isn't going to put me in a Mad World Anarchy Reigns mood. At least the music in those games was good. You know, along with the games themselves. Skip. <clears throat> Solar Rash is a game by the guys who made Hyperlight Drifter. People tell me that game is awesome, I just need to boot it up and finally play it because it's still sitting in my library collecting dust. Anyways, this looks pretty cool too. <clears throat> Oh, it changed color to white! Experience the true power of white! Gotta hand it to him. Pretty bold move of IO Interactive to make Hitman 3 a PS5 exclusive. A bit risky, but I think it could work as a console song. <laughs> mm. Sorry, I can't continue that bit with a straight face. Hey, I wonder if we'll be seeing any more exclusive... <laughs> Is this supposed to change my mind? Is this supposed to sway me into buying your new iPhone? <clears throat> Who asked for this? No, don't you leave with another self-masturbatory screensaver. I want some damn answers. What was the purpose of showing this to us? Was this your tax write-off? Did you need something sterile and inoffensive you can sell to the Chinese market? Aw, oh, what a cute, charming little adventure game. Wait, you're seriously gonna cave when people complain about tribal masks? Boo. <clears throat> People who buy consoles just to play monopolized sports titles genuinely baffle me. You end up having to buy a new title every year that, at best, is given very minimal changes, and at worst, in the case of NBA 2K games, implements an intrusive gambling system, which, as far as I'm aware, they've only doubled down on. It's disgusting and no one should be putting up with it. This trailer demonstrates the true height of the PS5's graphical capabilities, rendering hot. What? Sweaty boys. I will not drink the soy. I will not live in pods. I will not eat the bug snacks. Dang. This is what the creators of Octodad have been working on? A friend in my Discord pointed out that this game radiates pure Game Grumps energy. And yeah, I can see it clear as day. Like imagine if the team that brought you Dream Daddy Dating Simulator made their own lame version of Viva Pinata. Bug Snacks would probably be the end result. I've been seeing folks on Twitter say that this is the reason they're getting a PS5. Just to play a remake of Demon's Souls. Why? Why spend a possible $600 just to relive something you pretty much already played before? Also, no, I'm not counting this as an exclusive on Sony's tally. Based solely on the principle that it isn't a game that's new. Deathloop is essentially Dishonored with a higher emphasis on gunplay, so if you like Dishonored, this will probably be up your alley. Mm. Oh, and take notes, Returnal. This is how you make a time loop plot engaging. Leon has failed me for the last time. Ethan, I'm not asking you to fuck my sister. I'm ordering you to. Get in the van. Mm. I've heard that games like Pragmata are going to become more common. Or they're trying to be weird and surreal like Hajima's Death Stranding, only showing bizarre, no context teasers, and then turning out to be a game about delivering packages for Amazon and throwing piss grenades. This one's being done by Capcom, so let's see where it goes. <clears throat> so this is a weird case as far as exclusivity is concerned, because the first Horizon game is supposed to arrive on Steam this summer. It's June as I record this, and we still don't have a set release date. My point being, this new one might be a timed exclusive as well, depending on how things pan out. Okay, so quick editor's note, as of July 3rd, Horizon Zero Dawn has a PC release date for August 2020. For now at least, this goes on the exclusive section. But do I consider this the big moneymaker for PS5? God, no. And that's everything. Jeez, Sony, that was... sad. Not sad enough to stop kicking you as you're curled up in a ball, rocking back and forth in a fetal position, mind you, but still kind of depressing nevertheless. What the hell is that? Looks like a big-ass tower of gumballs. Come Oh. Hora! Alright, this is it. 
Let's part the black sea of blue balls and see what the box looks like. Probably gonna be another black rectangle. Oh fuck, it's the 5G emitter! Quick, everybody duck and cover before the radioactive waves make your dicks fall off! Seriously though, this design is fuck ugly. I'd be scared of this thing giving me a low on cyan error while I'm trying to play Cyberpunk 2077. Say, if you feel like being a real big brain, you can get the digital discless version. That way, if you get banned for pissing off Akami, your console becomes a useless paperweight, since you lose all those digital games licenses you purchased. And if you get both versions, you can- So, what have we learned today? We learned that Sony has no clue what they're doing. Most of the titles they've shown here either aren't exclusives, can hardly qualify as games, or are just too bland to acknowledge the selling points. Congratulations, Sony! You made a Philips CDI with a graphical tune-up that just so happens to be able to play a few select PC games. Great job, guys! Good luck with those class-action lawsuits! I hope you choke on them! <laughs>